and CBS. But good morning and welcome. Oh, good morning, and thank you for having me. Well, it's exciting when we have an opportunity to speak to someone who has been involved in this for as long as you have. Women uh, have always, uh, throughout my life at least, they've worked in businesses that I've been involved in. As a kid, I worked in a grocery store, and the checkers were girls, and you know, you 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 know where I, what I'm talking about. But that's changed, and it continues to change, where it's a real competitive market right now for women and men, same job, etc. Correct? Well, well, it's a very competitive world for sure, uh, on on many levels, not not just gender, but also in skills, experience, and capability. So it's it's definitely changed. Well, in March is Women's Month and time to woman up. So what are some of the uptrends you see for 2015 for women of all ages? Well, you know, you know I have been watching, looking at women's trends for a long time, and what I was starting to see in 2014, I was very optimistic about women, not only in the workforce, but also as business owners and entrepreneurs and even our boomer women after retirement, you know, just leading new directions for us and we always have so much to learn from women so i would say that i'm very up on women in 2015 based on some of the trends i was seeing in 2014. okay and so the, okay go ahead i'm sorry well the first one is the workplace you know we mm-hmm. we we have been reading non-stop about women in the workplace whether it's the numbers are off the salaries are off you know what's going on with our boards but here's what's different about 2015. It's in the news every single day, and companies now are taking action, saying, you know, let me analyze the percentages of women or minorities in my company. And Google started that and saying, you know, the numbers are pretty bad, and we're going to have to, you know, do up the numbers, so to speak. And then nine other companies followed suit. And so now we have transparency, and it's out in the open. And then we have companies like Intel and uh, McKinsey and NBC saying, you know what, i got to invest now in making sure that that pipeline that's ready to go is accelerated. So what I say to women is, you're in the spotlight in 2015. Raise your hand, right? This is your time to say, hey, I'm interested. What about that salary? What about that promotion? What about that leadership role? I'm here, I'm ready, and I read the news, and I see that, you know, it's time. Go ahead. No, all I was going to say about this, as far as women in the workplace, uh, also it goes back to college and it goes back to what women study in school. And uh, are, they, are they on par with men when they come out of business school? Is it, a, is it a fair thing to say that women and men are educated differently or is that becoming more a uh, common model? Well, okay, so there's a couple of, there's a couple of points here. Number one, w- women are more educated than men, all right? So women actually excel in all degrees over men so they're poised very well for and this is associates degrees bachelor degrees master's degrees and phds in the past i would say that you had gender specific subjects uh, and in currently that that is going to the wayside what we're finding is that actually when coming out of college the salaries are equal uh, in many industries, what's, where it changes is once they start working. And there's a lot of research on, is it because there's the culture of the co- corporation? Is it because of, you know, bias? Is it because the woman is not aggressive? So there's a lot of different research studies on that. Um, the choice of career, you know, if I were to tell the world what to pick, I would say pick technology because we have shortages all over in technology, and that's where the money is. So if I, you know, if I were to encourage a man or a woman, I would say computer programming, you know, learn about web application development. This is where the future is. Look at, look at um, technology and security. You know, this is where the future jobs are, gender, not, not even gender-related. Well, how does a woman deal with a difference in aggressiveness? You take a man who is uh, dynamic and he's strong, and, uh, you know, you can go back to Mad Men if you want. And then uh, you're not going to see, I don't believe, a television series called Mad Woman. <laughs> uh, now, you might. But you see what I'm talking about. When a woman is aggressive and a woman is dynamic, she, she gets called all kinds of things. But when a man does it, it, it you, uh, society in general looks at it differently. How do we overcome that? Yeah, so it's just to your point, there's some great shows out there now, like Veep and Madam Secretary and even House of Cards, where we have uh, women getting, you know, much more aggressive than, than in the past. But let, let me just address your point. 
is I encourage women to be to pick their companies well because every company has a different culture and there's going to be cultures that are like you're describing that that it's inappropriate for gender to be more I, I wouldn't say aggressive I would say assertive and then there's other cultures of companies where it's absolutely expected so and um, you know based on that I and I would encourage for any employee in the workforce is analyze the companies that you want to work for and make sure that there's a fit. And how do you find out about that? Talk to people working there. Ask them, you know, how, how is, is it for a young person? How is it for an older person? How is it for a male? How is it for a female? How is it for a family? So that you can get a good sense of fit in addition to just going to work. Well, you know, we have a CEO who's in charge of General Motors, which at one time, or maybe continues to be, probably one of the top five businesses in the world. Just guessing. I don't know. They used to be number one. Uh, and it seems that uh, problems with uh, GM uh, were always in the works. And then uh, the men ran and they promoted a woman. And now she seems to be handling all the recalls. Does that is that a suspicion to you or not? Yeah. Well, a lot of people have said that, you know, the guys run and the women came in to clean up the mess. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm happens. not the CEO. It's a tough job, you know, no matter what, what. And, um, and, you know, I feel for her quite a bit. But, uh, you know, she's a long-term player also. You bet. She's um, been there a long time. She started at the bottom and worked through the system. She knows how that system works. Yeah, and my sense is that I don't think she had her, I, I, my sense is she's going to stay there and she's going to see it through. Well, and I don't believe she gets her feelings, feelings hurt very easily. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I can't imagine at that level that she hasn't understood that you have to make decisions and hard decisions, and you're not going to be popular sometimes when you make those decisions. And if you want, you know, like they say, if you want love in Washington, get a dog. And I think yeah. that's probably true in corporate America as well. Yeah, and you know what? You're bringing up a very good point because not only is GM, but HP, we have a woman CEO, IBM, Xerox, Pepsi. Uh, chief operating officer, female at Facebook. So we have a lot of women who are in these, you know, high positions mm -hmm. doing doing great but, jobs. But they're not being paid as much as their men counterpart, it appears. Well, with the, I don't know if you read on the on the GM, is the packages were different. And so there was just different goals assigned to the packages. I don't know. I'm not the person. You wind up with $25 million, but it might be less of this and more of that, and a golden parachute or whatever they call those, and so on. Is that what you're saying, that the, it would add well, up? Well, the packages are different. One was uh, more short-term goals, and it sounds like the second package for her was uh, longer-term goals. Um, and so, and I guess each company has their different packages, like the Microsoft package is based on, um, you know, increasing revenues in multiples over a period of time. So I guess whatever the company wants. What, what I don't design the comp packages. <laughs> I understand. I, I, okay, with the limited time that we have, imagine a sophomore in high school comes to you and says, I would like to have a great future. I want to make a half a million dollars a year. I, I want to be part of... And I doubt that maybe a sophomore in high school would say that, but let's just imagine for a moment that, that they would. What kind of advice would you give someone? What kind of education should you get? Where should you go to school? Okay, so that's a really good question. And actually, a lot of sophomores are asking that question because they're looking at their parents saying, hmm, I don't think I want to do what they did. So number one is make a plan for yourself, and it can start in high school. Uh, you know, you're going to be living to 100. Kids are living to 120. They're going to be working f not 50 years, but more like 70 years. Mm -hmm. That's a very long time you're going to live companies. Finances, if we just depend on the salary of a company, uh, you know, I just don't think you're, it's enough. So you need to get financially astute about all instruments of financial, right, whether it's stock and options, bonds, real estate, uh, and actually incremental business that you can do to make revenue. Uh, I think it's important that we look more holistically at our career plans because it will be integrated. We're in a 24 by 7 world. And make sure that what you do in your 20s, you know, affects because, you know, make a plan for your 20s so that you have a better outcome in your 30s. And what you're doing in your 30s is going to impact what you're doing in your 70s and 80s. And where do you want to be at age 100? Because uh, mm. you might still be working. So I think it's more about planning today than in the past. I think you're looking right at me when you say that, too. You might be working <laughs> when you're 100. The other thing I was going to say is if you post anything on Facebook, just make sure it's pictures uh, and not any words. 
uh, emails are the same. Yeah, anything you do in your youth can always come back to haunt you at some point. And that's my advice to people. You know, it's fun to post things, but don't post things that you don't want coming back to look at 30 years from now. Yes, and, you know, actually people do, do look. Um, you know, there are many recruiters now who do a Facebook and all the social media scans before interviewing and either, you know, coach the people to remove the, the materials or just eliminate them because it's just too much work, right? It's just too much, it's too cumbersome to bring in somebody who has um, a jaded background and it's all out on the social media. But now there's things like Snapchat that can instantly remove photos, but, you know, there's a lot of history out there. Well, you also say, I'm sorry, um, that women are upbeat about politics this year. Why, why is that? You know, I, January 1, all I heard was who's running for or against Hillary, right? That was the mm -hmm. conversation. It was like, so I said, wow, that's going to be a big dinner conversation this year, whether it's Hillary or at that time it was Elizabeth Warren and Carly Fiorina. I mean, everybody was mm -hmm. talking about the women. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now we're starting to see some mudslinging and all, all kinds of things. But I just said that's the first time in a presidential election mm -hmm. that the female uh, became the topic. Um, and then number two is, you know, we, we're at our highest levels, not high enough in the Senate and the Congress. So I'm just more optimistic that women are seeing other role models in politics and following suit and getting involved. And I think that's when you start to see change happen, when you have diversity in workplace, diversity in, in politics as well. You know, I'm not sure that it's time for Hillary to be president, but I do believe it's time for a woman to be president. I, I really honestly believe that. I think, I think diversity in all organizations is, is key for innovation and for movement. Otherwise, we get into groupthink, uh, then same all, same all. And, you know, it's too competitive, as you started off saying. We, we just can't go, you know, backwards. The United States needs to go forwards. Something I found interesting was many of us probably remember the TV show The Golden Girls, where the four women live together, and you said that that's a new trend. It is. I said that our boomer women, there are three things that they're doing. They're, um, they're up on travel, uh, they're shacking up, and they're actually buffing up. Uh, and the shacking up is, uh, yes, that, we, that great show, Golden Girls, women 55-plus, divorced or widowed, decided to share resources and rent a house together. And women are saying, you know, I don't want to live with my kids again. I don't want to live alone. Uh, so, and I don't want to go to an old age home. I'm too young for that. So they are sharing houses again, according to AARP. And it's the chores, the finances. It's great social, and it's more secure. And so I'm excited about that. Makes sense. But, yeah, and then the YMCA, you know, the other one, I'm buffing up so that over the past three years, membership in their clubs of seniors, right, 65 and up, women went up 34%. So wow. women are saying, you know, I am living longer and I'm going to have a great time and I'm going to travel. I'm going to take five trips a year and have a great time with it. I have a grandson that's five years old and I was doing a little math about if he lives as long as my, grand, my, my father has lived and what year that will be. And you're right, we're going to see people with careers at 65, 70 years would be somewhat uncommon but not near as uncommon as it is today. And that's going to happen. Yes, in fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you know, they measured the boomers and said, okay, the, the boomers, because they entered and exited the workforce pretty much at the same time, they could measure how many jobs they had, which was like 11. And then they looked at the newer, younger generations and said, can we figure out how many jobs? And they said, we can't. We, can all, we don't even know what a career is anymore. So all we can project is this probably, they're probably going to have seven or eight careers. So what I tell people is the, co the company is going to be a stop. It's probably not a destination. And it's probably going to be a stop, maybe a long stop, in the middle of your work life. But there's going to be stops before it, and there's going to be a lot of stops after it, which is why you really need to plan. That's fantastic. I really enjoyed visiting with you. And uh, uh, you say the future, 2015, uh, is going to be amazing. That uh, ties in with the election and everything you feel? Well, you know what? Here's what really energizes me is that we talked about the workplace and the frustrations of, you know, the inequities of women in the workplace. But here's where they're going. Women always figure, you know, another path. And the women-owned businesses are growing at one and a half times the national average, whether it's their own businesses, franchises, or startups. And that's where I think women are leading the way because they know, okay, the old model isn't working for me. I'm going to go develop a new model, and they're starting businesses and being successful. So that's where I get excited about 2015. 
Dr. Tracy Weiland, thank you so much for being with us. You have a great day. I, ho- I hope you don't have 20 more interviews today, but uh, <laughs> I know you'll do fantastic on all of them. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you.